Good morning, you're watching All You Need to Know on Bloomberg Quint. I'm Darshan Mehta. If you're looking at what's happening with the Asian markets, many of them have managed to recover from the lows of the day and so has the SCX Nifty. It's moved up, moved down just uh, 18 points at this point of time. So uh, from a 75 downtick that we were looking almost an hour ago, now we've recovered to, recovered to almost just a drop of 15 points at this point of time. Nevertheless, most of the ADRs ended with a negative bias. If you're looking at Vedanta, it was down almost 4%. Tata Motors, ICICI and Dr. Eddy's were rather weak in trade. Only IT was a pack that managed to hold on. So Wipro and Infosys managed to hold out in a rather weak trade. Now, crude has been doing well. It was up almost 2.5% on Friday. Today, again, it's up almost 3 tenths of a percent. So, inching close to the 71 mark uh, is where Brent crude is currently. And WTI is inching close to the $66 barrel per mark. Most of the base metals on the LME ended with a negative bias. You could see that uh, aluminum was down over 1%, uh, nickel was down over 1%, and lead was down over 1%. But the Chinese markets have indicated extremely weak open. Copper is down over 2%, uh, zinc is down 6 tenths of a percent, aluminum is down 1%, and you can look at steel. Steel is down almost 3%. Uh, in fact, rubber is down over 6% on the Chinese markets. Most of the precious metals are trading flat to a positive bias in trade currently. How did fund flows pan out? FIs were net bias to the tune of all, almost uh, uh, 1,600 crores in the cash market. DI sold in almost 935 crores in the cash market. Now, the market was weak. The Nifty was down 116 points, but the mid-cap, small-cap, and the Nifty Bank, all of them saw heavy selling that came off in trade yesterday. If you're looking at some of the sectors, the real estate and metal sector saw the majority of the selling that had to happen, so there was a significant amount of selling that happened. As far as uh, the India Wix is concerned, the India Wix was up almost 2% in trade. Now, if you're looking at uh, you know some of uh, the contributors on the downside, HDFC Bank, ICICI Bank, Reliance, and LNT were the prime contributors for the Nifty's fall on Friday. So that was what happened with the Nifty. Now, as far as the FNO market is concerned, what we saw was at least for the futures, there was a long unwinding that was seen. Open interest was down almost 3%. As far as the Nifty Bank is concerned, we saw that again there was long unwinding that was seen. Open interest was down almost 5% for the Nifty Bank. Now, what is happening is that, uh, you know, uh, positions are taken in and around the 10,000 mark. So put writers are active from levels of 10,000 to lower levels and call writers are active from 10,000 to higher levels. So 10,000 becomes extremely important at this point of time. Even on Friday, if you're looking at it, call writers became much more aggressive in trade at the 10,000 level and at higher levels. And put writers were forced to shed positions at lower levels since the markets were going down. Now, the PCR on the Nifty moved from 1.05 to 1.04. For the Nifty Bank, it moved from 1.15 to 0 0.94. Some of the counters in focus, some of the counters that come in the FNO band is OBC, it comes in the FNO band. Well, three counters move out of the FNO band, they're JSPL, JP Associates, and Reliance Communication. So these three counters are out of the FNO band. In IGL, you saw open interest down almost 4%. Uh, the counter was down almost 3% in trade. Uh, sale, again, open interest was flat in trade, but the counter managed to drop almost 7% in trade. You had Devan Housing, which came out of the FNO band, but nevertheless, there was long unwinding that was seen on the counter. And finally, you have counters like Jet Airways, which saw long unwinding that came in. Open interest was down almost 16%. The counter was down almost 4% in trade. But that's what happened with the FNO side. But uh, some global news, the U.S. has started renegotiating re its trade pact with individual companies. The Trump administration has inked a deal with South Korea this weekend. Some that the Treasury Secretary Steve Nunchin has described a win for both countries. The pact, he said, is going to be with China. Here's Bloomberg News' Mark uh, Nickett uh, Nick with the details. Um, Stephen Mnuchin was very clear on the political talk shows that um, the U.S. will proceed with the tariffs unless there's an acceptable agreement that the president can sign off on, is how he put it. Uh, but he did say he's having productive conversations with the Chinese vice premier, and they're trying to come to some kind of agreement that potentially could forestall the tariffs that the president announced he wanted to impose on China. Treasury Secretary Mnuchin also said that uh, essentially a, a, an agreement has been reached both on revising the six-year-old bilateral trade deal, which is known as Chorus, as well as the uh, tariffs on steel imports that Trump wanted to impose. Um, this had also been confirmed by uh, the South Korean uh, trade minister. Uh, we don't have a lot of the details yet uh, about what this agreement might mean for both the trade deal and for the uh, tariffs, but uh, Steve Mnuchin did say that uh, South Korea will reduce the amount of steel that they send to the U.S. as part of the agreement. 
Uh, back to Indian equity markets, stock of the day is Tata Power. Well, the company has signed back with Tata Communication and Pantone. The company is expected to sell is signing. Uh, has uh, will be selling around 40% stake in Pantone uh, for a sum of around 1,542 odd crore to Tata Sons, which is its promoter. And also, also it will be divesting a good 4.7% stake in Tata Communication for sum of around 613 crore. This is in line with the company's strategy to divest the non-core assets in order to bring down its debt. Uh, the company's current consolidated uh, debt to equity ratio stands at a good 2.9 times, which is significant enough. Uh, also, if you look at the non-project debt uh, number, you see uh, debt to loss making UMPP uh, stands at 10,000 crore, while that uh, for the debt for funding well spun is around 4,459 crore, along with other stands at 1,793 crore. Uh, what Morgan Stanley has to say about this? Well, well the company, uh, well, the brokerage has maintained an overweight rating with target price of around 94 it assigns uh, the transaction value translates to around a rupees 8 per share for Tata power this is against uh, the base case value uh, a little higher than the base case value valuation of rupees 6 per share however it says that it's going to be awaiting clarity in terms of uh, the potential long-term capital gains tax if any on this transaction it also sees a potential upside from these moves as the company leverages uh, leverage profile uh, also improves it also has stated that the company was looking to divest some stake in defense business. However, it also says that it has not factored in any kind of a potential proceeds which could be coming in from the defense business in the base case valuation. Let's now look at uh, the commodity space, starting off with oil prices. Uh, that is actually trading uh, with a positive bias in early Asian hours after, uh, after posting handsome gains for last week. So WTI, uh, in fact, surged more than 2% on Friday, while Brent also surged uh, nearly 2% and crossed the key $70 barrel mark. Uh, now, this is largely on the back of uh, uh, Trump appointing uh, Bolton as uh, the national security advisor. On the back of this, uh, WTI actually posted, uh, you know, the biggest weekly gain uh, since July and uh, Brent actually surged more than 3% for last week. As far as base metals are concerned, most of the base metals ended lower on Friday, but the index itself posted a fifth straight uh, weekly loss. Now, this is largely on the back of uh, trade conflict uh, escalating between the US and China. As far as individual base metals are concerned, we had aluminium, nickel and lead, which declined more than 1% each. Zinc was the only gainer in trade uh, that surged about uh, half a percent while copper and tin closed marginally lower. Shifting focus to the precious metal space, uh, we, we also saw that uh, gold futures have now crossed above the 1350 mark and it posted the biggest weekly advance in about, uh, you know, three, in about uh, uh, five weeks. Now, this is also on the back of uh, escalating uh, trade war concerns between the US and China. Well, among the stocks that we're tracking in trade today includes Gale India and this is on the back of a PTI report which says that ONGC may buy out Gale's 19% stake in ONGC Petro Edition, so positive development for Gale. In the other part, we're also watching out for Sandur Manganese which has said that the enhancement in manganese over annual production and mining lease uh, from 7,400 to 34,000 tons has been approved uh, by an empowered committee. Then you also have a Times of India report which quotes uh, Suresh Prabhu and uh, saying that the merger for STC, that is Straight Trading Corp and MN MMTC, is on the cards. So watch out for both those names. You also have a Bloomberg report which says that the consortium led by TPG and Manipal Health Enterprises is nearing an agreement to gain control of uh, Fortis Healthcare. That's a Bloomberg news and a deal could be announced in the next few days. So uh, we will continue to track that stock. Uh, that apart, we're also watching out for Reliance Communication. And again, this is on the back of an ET report which says that Systema has emerged as the highest bidder for the rest of Reliance Communications. That is undersea cables, enterprise unit and data centers. And the bid has been valued at one and a half billion dollars. And this sale will, of course, mark complete exit of Anil Ambani from the telecom venture. You also have Bharat Financial, which has said that they've completed direct assignment deals worth nearly 1400 crores we're also tracking nhpc which has uh, commissioned 50 megawatt solar project in tamil nadu and lastly lumax auto where the board has approved a stock split in the ratio of one is to five so watch out for all of these names so over the weekend reliance industries signed a deal to acquire Sauvan india 
Media Private Limited. So there are two parts to this deal. In the first part, Reliance Industries will put in close to 806 crore rupees, or that is 124 million US dollars, to acquire 41.1 percent stake in Savan Media Private Limited. And how will they get this 41.1 percent stake? Well, partially they'll get it from the uh, existing promoters, that is Tiger Global Management, Liberty Media, Bertelsmann, and other for 676 crore rupees. And apart from this, the company will also put in close to 130 crore rupees for fresh shares, which will be used by the company for investment in growth and expansion of this music content so in total they invest close to 806 crore rupees for 41.1 percent stake now in the second part reliance industries will merge its uh, mu uh, own digital music service that is geo music with Savan india thereby creating an entity worth 1 billion us dollars and in this entity reliance industries will own close to 81.7 percent stake now this 1 billion dollar valuation is given by reliance industries based on the valuation and what they are investing in Savan media and in this 1 billion dollar geo music will be valued at close to 670 US mil million US dollars while Savan India will be valued at 330 million US dollars that is give, uh, that is that brings the total entities valuation as clo close to 6500 crore rupees now why uh, Reliance Industries is expecting this deal to complete by June 30 2018 and in future date Reliance has also promised a further uh, investment of close to 520 crore rupees that is 80 million US dollars in future date now why this investment well after creating a data abundance environment in the telecom industry at cheaper rate Reliance Industries is now providing platform for its users to use this data along with that this investment will also strengthen Reliance Industries digital content and entertainment offerings now after investing in Balaji Telefilms which has show content uh, then investing in Niros, which has movie content, it has now invested in Savan India, which has music content. It has around 36 million songs in 15 languages and 900 plus label partnership, which can be accessed across the globe. Now, this is Reliance Industries' fourth investment in media uh, industry. In 2014, they invested in Network 18. The in one year back, they invested in Balaji Films. One month back, they bought stake in Eros International and now in Savan. Now, JP Morgan is saying that this content or uh, this uh, spending in content will continue when it comes to reliance uh, geo and it also says that content monetization is a key variable for geo as it as a long-term monetization of its uh, long telecom assets now over the weekend there was also one more deal fina finalized by india bulls and we have jayesh to give us the details about that thanks for that Somit. Uh, so on friday the board of india bulls uh, realty actually uh, gave the contours of uh, the their divestment to Blackstone Group. Let's have a look at uh, what they are actually going to divest. So it's 50% uh, stake in India Bulls Properties Limited and 50% stake in India Bulls uh, Real Estate Company. Uh, now, how the deal is valued? Uh, let's have a look at that. Uh, so uh, you know, Blackstone will uh, has actually valued the deal at an enterprise value of uh, 1461 million dollars, uh, which stands at nearly 9,500 crores. So how does the valuation or the uh, you know the value of India Bulls Real Estate stand up currently? Uh, so it, it has an enterprise value of nearly 17,000 crores. Uh, you know that is the latest number that we have, and uh, you know it has a market capitalization of nearly 900, uh, 9,100 crores. Let's have a look at, uh, you know, how they are going to, or the proceeds, uh, how they are going to use it. Uh, so one is that uh, they will actually repay the existing debt of the company and uh, some of the subsidiaries as well. It will also help in, you know, supporting the business and the long-term growth plans of India Bulls real estate. Uh, let's also have a look at, uh, you know, what kind of debt picture uh, stands out uh, currently. So the rental properties, that has a debt of about uh, 4,200 odd crores, uh, while the total debt of the company stands at about uh, 9,119 crores. Um, let's also have a look at, uh, you know, uh, how how the structure of the company will look like once the deal is complete. Uh, what will happen is uh, the India Bulls Properties Investment Trust uh, that that will be you know co-owned by Blackstone and India Bulls Real Estate 50% each. Uh, while some of the other assets, all the other assets that India Bulls Real Estate have, uh, that will be you know 100% owned by India Bulls Real Estate. Now these two companies, uh, you know the real estate and the investment property trust, how do these look like uh, post the restructuring? Uh, so you know India Bulls uh, Properties Investment that. That largely owns uh, one India Bulls uh, tower in Lower Perel as well as uh, one uh, India Bulls Finance Center. That actually has a completed uh, lease, uh, uh, you know, of about uh, 3.3 million square feet, while they have under construction of about 0.8 million square feet. Uh, as far as some of the other residential projects are complete, uh, are, are concerned, now these are largely in and around uh, the area of uh, Lower Parel as well. Uh, they have completed of about uh, 0.4 million square feet, while they have ongoing of about 1.6 million square feet. Let's also have a look at uh, the last portion, which is uh, the Enable's real estate uh, project. Now, uh, what 
what what what they have is uh, leased office space, which is uh, the completed space is about 1.9 million square feet. While the planned, the other planned one that is about 2.4 million. Now this 1.9 million is largely Chennai, and as of yesterday's exchange uh, notice, that they have actually entered into a sale agreement to the tune of about 285 crores. Let's have also have a look at you know some of the other properties that they have uh, in and around Mumbai NCR region. Uh, so they have ongoing projects which are which have you know 32.5 million square feet, while they have a land bank of about 1,000 odd acres. But that said, for India Bulls real estate, a new IPO opens up, uh, and Nikki Mitchandani has all the details. Oh well, thank you, Jayesh, for that. Uh, well, we have the lemon tree uh, IPO today coming up. Uh, it's a thousand forty crore offer size IPO with a price band of fifty four to fifty six, where the promoters are looking to divest a good twenty four percent stake through this IPO. Uh, well, to run quickly, run you down about the profile of the company. It's it's the country's largest hotel chain uh, in the mid price segment. Has approximately four thousand six hundred ninety seven rooms, which have been in forty five hotels spread across. A 28 cities. Out of these uh, 45 hotels, 19 are owned. Three of them have been uh, owned on a leased or licensed land. Five leased and 18 are the managed ones. Uh, le well, let's to look at uh, the revenue uh, kind of a total room allocation towards the segment. Uh, the premium segment there, you would have 28% coming in uh, allocated to that segment, 49% from uh, the other segment, which is a mid-revenue segment, which is lemon tree hotels and Red Fox which is the economy segment holds around 23% of the rooms. Um, also if you look at in terms of the revenue breakup you have 63% of your revenues actually coming in from the own segment which also means that the capex requirement for this company would be tentatively higher. In terms of the CHER growth that we can look in terms of revenue EBITDA and the net worth of the company they stand for the space span of five years at a rate of around 18, 33 and 5%. In in terms of bottom line, well, the company has been, the hotel has been a loss-making entity ever since FY13. It only uh, narrowed down its losses in FY17 to 8.2 crore and further it turned profitable only for the nine-month ended FY18. Moving to its debt-to-equity ratio where uh, that number stands at 0.79 times for the nine-month ended uh, from against 0.44 times that we saw back in FY13, uh, the total debt on books uh, as of the uh, nine month ended FY18 stood at around 975 odd crore, and the company is expected to increase that by another 400 crore on the back or to fund its expansion. In terms of the occupancy rate, where that's a pretty picture there, lemon tree occupancy rates sits at a good 76% for FY17, which is way higher as compared to the industry standards of a 65% rate. In terms of the revenue growth, you have bulk of it coming in from three star average and four star average at 44 and 41 percent. Uh, in terms of EV to EBITDA, looks like it's an expensive deal. Uh, lemon tree EV to EBITDA stands at 46 times as compared to that of Indian Hotels, EIH and Royal Orchid. What brokerages have to say about this IPO? Uh, well, ICCS says it, this IPO could be avoided while Angel Broking suggests a neutral rating for this counter. On the big brokerage calls for the day, first we have a CLSA on Cadilla Healthcare. Now the brokerage has upgraded the stock to buy from underperform and has raised the target price to 450 from 440. Now according to the brokerage, improving India outlook and strong US pipeline will drive earnings for the company. The brokerage is also expecting improvement in new launches in the US market in 2018. Now Cadilla expects to launch nearly 40 products in the US market in 2018 and it has over 100 pending approvals. Also biosimilars, vaccines and novel research products will drive the long-term growth for Cadilla Healthcare according to the brokerage. Now the brokerage also expects Cadilla to look for more product deals in the specialty space using the cash flows that the company will get in the financial year 2018. Lastly, it expects the company's earnings to grow at a compounded annual growth rate of 16% over FY18 to FY20. Second, we have a city on Coffee Day Enterprises. Now the brokerage has maintained its buy rating on the stock but has raised the target price to 350 from 285. Now, 
according to the brokerage the coffer business of the company is stable and going forward going forward growth will be boosted by strong export numbers All, along with this commercialization of its key units should also aid profit growth for the company from the second half of financial year 2019 also stake sales in allied businesses would aid cash flows for the company and address the debt concern for coffee day enterprises lastly it says that it has raised the target price as they have rolled forward the coffee business valuations and have accounted for the changes in the market capitalization of the listed businesses well there's clearly lots to talk about over the course of the day and you'll find all the live market action right here on bloomberg quint live there are also several stories that you can find on the website bloombergquint.com here are just a couple of them Punjab National Bank plans to take part in the bankruptcy proceeding of Firestar Diamond, a group company of jewellery designer Nirav Modi, who is one of the accused in the 12,700 crore fraud at the public sector lender. The Securities and Exchange Board of India plans to increase the maximum investment by angel funds in venture capital undertakings to 10 crore rupees from the current 5 crore. This is an attempt to bolster the startup ecosystem in the country. An Indian firm has mobilized more than 58,000 crore rupees by issuing shares to institutional investors during the April to January period of the current financial year. That's a 12-fold increase from the same period a year ago. Well, that's all we have for you in this edition of All You Need to Know. Up next is Indian Open and that will take you through Market Open. Thanks so much for watching. This is Bloomberg Quint.